Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. Am, am I on? You're on. You're live. Officially? You're officially live. At okay. The that, that, sounded, that, that sounded very interesting. I only caught like the last couple minutes of that, but that, that was like a, or sounded like a, a very good letter. Yeah, that was um, Peter Steiger um, has okay. sent that. And um, him and um, Ronald Sandlin are together in Arkansas, you said, right? Arkansas. Yeah, in Arkansas. So they um, co-wrote a letter together and are co-writing a book. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like the kind of writing that would go in a book. So we have more power to them. That, that sounds very, very cogent and that was very good analysis. And I think police state is definitely the, the word of the day. Um, just, just how things are, are turning out here in in the courts. Um, we all had kind of hoped against hope that um, once they had saved their appetites with uh, the Proud Boys, that maybe maybe some sanity would come back into D.C. But no, actually, now that they've scored so much precedent, it seems like uh, they're just they're just going to turn up the heat more and more. Um, I. I Discuss briefly uh, my my sense of thinking today, and um, you know this is this is nothing against my attorney because she's she's an expert in law, and uh, these are not courts of law. Um, these are farcical show trials, and there's not a whole lot you can do uh, in terms of law to to uh, get justice. So so. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's looking really not good for my case. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, I'm sorry. Is that it? Doesn't sound like it's been good for anyone's cases. No, no, that's the thing. It's just like I see, I see people come and go, and it doesn't matter. What's different about their case, or what they have, you know, that's unique, or special circumstances that we're not, we're fundamentally not human beings to the people of uh, Washington D.C. Uh, they are very much uh, in uh, the vein of the the racist uh, juries and uh, judges uh, that. Um, you know, used to be popular in in the old South. You know, uh, you, there was a time when you know, if you were a black man in the old South, the chances are you were not going to get a fair trial. You know, you'd have Klansmen judges and all. You know, half the half the jury would be you know extremely racist. And uh, yeah, so that's that's why the term Mississippi justice became. Uh, a, a term, you know, that applies to situations where uh, normal rules and, and ideas that you would go over in court um, just are not are not part of uh, the process. So um, I mean, if you look at the fact that the, the DC judges themselves uh, have uh, contributed to uh, many of them have contributed directly to uh, the farce that was the, the Russia collusion hoax, which is a hoax perpetuated by the government, by the DOJ. And uh, that's not grounds for uh, for a uh, change of venue. That's not grounds for dismissal. Um, they just walk right past that. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of funny today that the news headlines were all about um, the, the ethical uh, concerns of Trump uh, campaigning while needing to raise money for his, his legal team. And I, I, I'm instantly recalling that, that line from um, uh, A Man for All Seasons when he criticizes the, the politicians for being labor-like scholars over a bulldog's pedigree. It's like, well, you're labor-like scholars over over the possibility that Trump might have an ethical violation. But you yourselves see no issue with the many manifest, brazen, shining like bright supernovas right in our faces 
those those uh, bias issues that you bring to court every day, you don't you don't see a problem with that at all. Um, and that's because uh, if if you're a Democrat, uh, it's synonymous with being uh, unaccountable, crazy people. Um, you, it's just what what Democrats are. They're they're unaccountable psychopaths. Members of the totalitarian psycho state, and they'll they'll never stop using and abusing their power to hurt us uh, because one they, they get kind of a, a big pleasure out of it, and two they see us as fundamentally flawed and subhumans who need to be removed from the equation in order to go forward into their utopia. Right. And the, and they're doing it. <laughs> it's. It's not. It's not. It's not theory anymore. It's not. It's not uh, something you, you hear in in the halls of universities anymore. This is this is the this is the practice that we are. We have entered practice. You know, this is this is where we go uh, when we want to fundamentally change society. And, and the Democrats are doing that by using police state powers to to eviscerate us from society, from our homes, from our families, from our jobs, um, and they will, they will never ever see uh, the ethical conundrum that they are creating every day. Um, I wish, I, you know, every day I pray for sanity to return, but it, it never does. And it, it's a shame that we can't have uh, people who think people who are rational, um, people who are fair in our legal system. And it, it just makes me sad, because I would have liked to have seen my house again. Um, the fact that I can't, very, very um, disappointing. But I, I think I'm gonna write down today exactly what my sentence is gonna be. I don't think it was made so much trial because <laughs> I, I can kind of see, I can kind of see the outline of, of what's going to happen. Just like I could see the outline of what was going to happen in my trial. None of that stuff was surprising. Yeah, unfortunately it, it, it unfortunately it isn't shocking, but it in a way it still is very shocking. Um you're not shocked by the outcome of the guilty verdicts, but you're very shocked at the gall. I mean, how we get there? Yeah. Yeah. How do yeah, we have the, the, judges that are are completely biased that are literally practicing law from the bench? I've heard almost every single judge has, you know, made statements and pontificated about this dangerous insurrection and danger to democracy and and you know. It's it's the same speech and it's each different judge saying it. So it's like. Who wrote it? I want to know who wrote the speech that they that they all repeat over and over. <laughs> the and over talking again. point. Right, and you hear it over and well, over and it, over it, at I the mean, beginning it, of every single trial, and every single J six defendant was the most gregarious defendant, had the worst conduct, was the most violent that day, was the flame that lit the match. I mean, just every thing is applied to each individual. Defendant, each like, and every one, yeah, each right. and even so, to the point, you know, today uh, I witnessed two hours of testimony that had nothing to do with the defendant. Nothing. It did not have to do with that mm -hmm. man doing one thing that the, that was being testified to. So nothing pertained to him about two hours of testimony, and I, and the defendant, the witness that was testifying. The MPD officer, who was clearly coached, clearly he said violent. <clears throat> he he first said protester, and then he caught himself and he corrected it with violent protester. But then he went on to say violent protester seven more times. And then what really struck me as odd was the defense attorney went on to say violent protesters four more times, and then the prosecution only said it once. <clears throat> so um. I'm very confused at, about that whole scenario, but 
But it does, it, and I didn't hear one objection uh, to, to why is this even being t talked about. This doesn't have any, it doesn't pertain to this man at all. But we're going to inflame the jury with some testimony right. about an officer who was assaulted, not by this defendant. So, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, yeah there's well, that's, that's, that's textbook manipulation right there. Right. I mean, you're, you're, you're manipulating people into a certain psychological space so that they will not have sympathy. Um, I, think, I think that's unnecessary because we're not human beings in the eyes of the, the jury. So I, I, it's a wonder that they're doing it. Maybe, maybe because, you know, it's their favorite part. You know, they like, they like to listen to that, uh, the, you know, the, the buildup, or maybe, maybe it's somehow noble and good, which it's not. Um, they, they are, they are uh, members, uh, participating members, and one of the most shameful acts of government abuse in the history of the United States. Absolutely. Um, and they are, yeah, and they are, they are willing participants in the establishment of a police state, an oppressive, an oppressive state that uh, selectively prosecutes people based solely on their ideas and their ideologies. Um, and, I'm glad I'm not one of them because I, I don't think I would be able to wake up in the morning. Um, you have one minute remaining. Yeah, I'm a yeah, sobering, that sobering, sobering day. For sure. So, so I will I will say some good news. I will say some good news. I finally got that darn gummy bear above the candy line. Uh, and this one level was uh, Candy Crush that had been bothering me so much. So, I'm so happy for it's you. It's a small well, sort of accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys, you guys keep rocking it. I believe it's Matt. All right, well, thank you, Matt. And you keep your head up, Patriot. We love you. Yep. We'll hear you at the anthem. All right. Thank you, guys. Good night. Hear you at the anthem. Bye. Yes, that was Matt DeSilva. He usually says his prisoner number at the beginning, but um, it, we're a little bit uh, discombobulated, I guess, tonight from uh, that, the message from, it was Peter Steiger? Is that right? Yes. Peter Steiger. Do you want to finish that? Or are you already finished? Okay. But he okay. sends his love, just remind everyone in there that uh, he remembers them, and it's a bittersweet reunion, but they're they're making the connections and he hopes to continue that after this so keep as a community absolutely you know and i'll just reiterate um what i was saying about peter schwartz earlier um you know it, it's so important for us to continue to keep contact with these guys once they leave dc i mean obviously when when they get here you know we make contact with them we invite them into this loving family but we have to keep that community up and we have to keep that community involvement up because they do um they are very isolated in prison and it's not uh, uh, the kind of situation that um you know invites uh, a lot of uh conversation back and forth that you know it takes sometimes weeks if not months to get letters back and forth and when they get into the bop it is a lot more difficult to talk to them on the phone because they only have so many minutes a month and that's it so um if you know pick a j6er go on patriot mail project pick a j6er in your state somebody from your community and reach out and and just you know continue to um, be a participant in this uh, very loving j6 community that we all need to unify and not be so divided